Hello, NASDAQ followers, and welcome to another episode of Behind the Bell. I'm your host, Leanne Alfaro, and you just saw Altair ring the opening bell in honor of the Altair Enlighten Award, among other recent milestones. Joining me right now to talk a little bit more about it is Richard Yen, who is SVP of Automotive and Industry Verticals team at Altair. Thank Good you for morning. Yeah, Good this morning. Is an exciting quite, morning. Quite an exciting morning. We have two big winners that were awarded for this award, but I want to learn a little bit more about it as it's the award that honors the greatest achievements in vehicle weight savings each year. So talk to us about how the award came about, its origins, and, and what you recognize. Yes, sir. I think it started from our uh, Altair's business. You know, when we uh, start the business, we really focus on product development and the machine learnings and optimizations. So one of the way we try to transform is the design process. So when you talk about a lightweighting, there's a lot of innovation involved. There's a lot of knowledge involved. We thought the lightweight in the world would be a really good vehicle to help us to understand where is the trend the marketing is moving. Market is moving, where is the, the, the pulse of the market and how the customers apply to it, and most importantly is inspiration. We are trying to find what is the inspiration between the design, engineering, and manufacturing. That's why we come up with the award. Fantastic, and now for people who may not be familiar, what is vehicle light weighting? The vehicle light weighting is essentially we understand everything with mobility, right? You want to move the vehicle in a longer distance, you want to save the fuel, you want to, especially right now when people move into electrical vehicles, right? That you want the vehicle to be lightweight so you can move a longer distance. Mm -hmm. So the lightweighting essentially is reduce the weight of the vehicles. But the hardest part is that where do you reduce the weight? That's why there are so many companies, you know, including the OEMs, including the suppliers, including the people have a vision for the future of the lightweighting. They all contribute to come up with the ideas. That's why we can figure out what is the real way that we can apply to the commercial products. So you touched on this a little bit already, but this spans so many industries because it requires the expertise from everything from engineers to policymakers. So how do all these different fields collaborate with each other to come out with the final product? Yeah, I think at lightweighting, if you want to reduce the weight of the vehicle, it's not just in a lab, it's not just for you know, research. In reality, you have to apply to a commercial vehicles, right? You have to apply to the passenger vehicle that we are using every single day. And not only in automotive, but also in aerospace, you know, the shipbuilding, everything is moving, require energies that we need the lightweighting. So in order to bring the lightweighting to become a realistic, we need to have a policy makers and researchers work together looking into several areas. Say for example, it needs to be a technical feasible. When we consider lightweighting, we, you have to consider not only the engineering perspective, you also have to consider cost and performance. So the engineering aspect needs to be feasible. We also have to look at the economy practical. Practically, say for example, if it's going to be too expensive, nobody is going to buy it, mm -hmm. right? So from many different aspects, that the policy makers and the technical engineering OEMs have to work together to come up with something that we can do together. It's all about collaboration. Yes. So now when we're looking at the product and it, both from a consumer perspective and the way that it affects their environment, what are the implications for efficiency and again, the environment with these cars that are more lightweight? I think it's everything driven by the emission constraint, the CO2, you know, footprint, mm -hmm. you know, that we experience the global warming, mm -hmm. right? So, so I think the idea is how we're going to reduce the CO2 emissions is going to be a goal to drive this lightweighting stuff. Absolutely. Now, let's talk about the winners, right? We had such diversity and we had two main winners. Tell us a little bit more about them. Yeah, indeed, that when the OEMs, consider the lightweighting strategies, right? And you consider different production volumes. So for example, like Ferrari, they are low productions. And the FCA or GM or Ford, they have a mass production vehicles. So the way they are thinking about the strategy, 
would be from a different perspective. For a luxury vehicle, you may have a more room to experience a little bit new ideas. Mm. So for example, like Ferrari, they are using the four aluminum bodies. They may have a composite on the exterior. Mm -hmm. But for the FCA or GM, they may consider using more different type of the steels. And because the way the vehicle assembles through the assembly process, you know, the luxury low volume vehicles may be different from the high volume vehicles. So when you are consider the whole ecosystems for the production of the vehicles, certainly the low volume and the high volume have a little bit different consideration. And we see those could have a different drive for the lightweight in. That's why we select two different categories. Mm -hmm. And it also shows that there is not one kind of archetype car that kind of would win this award. You, you have different ways to get at the same end goal. Indeed, uh, say, think about this. Say for example, OEM, in order to make OEM, to make the lightweight available, that you need the suppliers, which is the subsystem suppliers, the module suppliers, to support you. Mm -hmm. So this come, actually this winner is ZF, you know, for the airbag. Mm -hmm. And then also like uh, GM's composite, you know, for the truck back. And everybody looking into the lightweight team to support the OEM score. And certainly in order to get into the module, you also have to have a enabling technologies. So what are the enabling technologies? Like a joint method, like a adhesive, like material. Like this time, we have a smart steel from MSC, which is really make the steel really quiet. Hmm. Also, we have a DSM on the hot air charging duct. So those are going to make the lightweight in become available you know, for the OEMs. And certainly at the very end, we have a future of the lightweight in that you just touched. That looking forward, you know, what is the boundary that we can push for the lightweight in? And what does that future look like to you? Yeah, so, so when we talk about the mobility, we talk about the future mobility, right? So the future mobility could be EV tall, like uh, vertical lift mm -hmm. vehicles like uh, autonomous driving, like EV, right? So those are future vehicles required in lightweight. But in order to do the lightweight, you got to have a comfortable and also highly adaptable method to produce a products. So this time the winner of the future lightweighting category is from a CSI, which is the ultra lightweight seat. Mm -hmm. So everything is 3D printed. So the idea is not, right now we don't think about the cost, but we try to see where's the boundary that we try to push. Mm -hmm. So we, you can have a really good performance, you have a really good highly adaptable method to produce. So in this chair, uh, in this seat that you have a 3D printing material, on the area, the loads, we say that the, the material follow the loads would be the best way to produce the lightweight structure. So they have a 3D printing for the carbon fibers directions to follow the loads. At the same time, they use a different way of the cushions 3D printed to fit the bodies of the human, to fit the personalization of the human body so you feel most comfortable. So this is the area that we are seeing how people can use the most advanced technology to produce the future of lightweight and stuff. So the future of lightweight being not only lightweight, but highly customizable and highly adaptable. Exactly, because uh, the future of the mobility, you don't know where it's going to happen and what is going to happen, right? Say for example, like autonomous driving, you may have a seat or in different directions and mm -hmm. you may want to have a really lightweight seat and how the seat is going to be designed. Uh, it's a little bit hard to image for the future, but you have to prepare the technology ready for this. I love that Altair is not only thinking about efficiency and the environment, but also the future and all yes. these implications that new technologies like autonomous driving will bring. Yep. Well, Richard, what a fascinating conversation. Thank you so much for sharing a little bit of your experience and a little bit about the award winners this year. Thank you very much. All right, yep. congratulations. Hope to have you back in the studio soon. Thank you. NASDAQ followers, please stay tuned for more coverage coming to you right here from the NASDAQ market site. Until then, signing off right here from Time.